Next.js 13.4 is here and they have introduced the most surefire way to leak your personal credentials to anyone using your app. No, I'm just kidding. Well, kind of. The front-end and back-end code has never before been so tightly coupled together. And while that does bring some positives, it also brings some negatives. Let's take a look at what server components are, what problems they allow you to solve, and what you need to watch out for when you're using them. One thing I found funny is if you try creating a Next.js application with the Next app at latest, there's something that changed. And because the 13.4 just came out, we can give it any name. It's gonna ask us the default questions with TypeScript and the Slint, Tailwind, and then it's gonna ask us use app router recommend it. Well, that's new. And the default option is now yes. Before it was no. So now they actually recommend working with the app router, which I can actually get behind because I think it's very well done. If you want to try this out yourself, make sure you have the server actions true in your Next.js config, and then you can actually get started with server actions. So let me give you a rundown on how they work. What we traditionally did is if we wanted any interactivity to happen when we click the button, for example, log message, that's what the button should do. Then the way we did that is through an on click. And on click, for example, we can call an inline function that console logs hello. If we try this and save this and go to our local host, we can see event handlers cannot be passed to client component props. Essentially meaning we have to turn this into a client component for it to work. So this is now rendered on the client side, meaning we can actually use APIs like onClick that handle client side events because after all, it's just an event listener that we cannot use service side. And now if you clicked log message, it will actually log the message. What if we don't want to declare this as a client component though? Um, for example, because we're making database requests. Well, currently we can't do this. With Next.js server actions, that approach is actually different. Now we can. And the way we can do that is by creating a form instead. And if you're not too familiar with default HTML, if you create a button inside of a form, the default type of that button is going to be of submit. So whenever we click this button right here, we could also define this explicitly if we wanted to, we could say type and then we can see there's button reset and submit. This is the default though, so we don't need to explicitly do that. Then if we click this button, this form is submitted and this action will be triggered for us. So what that allows us to do, say we define a console log function as the action. We can do that now. So if we were to define an async, very important, this needs to be asynchronous, function console log. Again, this needs to be asynchronous, even though we're not doing anything asynchronous in here. It's just important that you define it as such. And then when we say console log hello and save this, first off in Next.js, anything prior to the current version 13.4, this would be unheard of. This would be possible. With server actions that have just been introduced, it is. So if we uh, say console log inside of the button, again, by default, it will be the submit. We can take a look at our local host. And what we can see is functions cannot be passed directly to client components unless you explicitly expose it by marking it with use server, which just means that if we go back to this right here inside of this function, just like we would declare a whole component as use server or use client respectively, we can do the same thing with this function. So we can say use server and just by doing that, we can specify that this function, whatever comes next, is only going to be run on the server and not on the client. If we go back to localhost and refresh the page, we can see there's no error. That's weird, but surely if we click this, this is a server component, this won't work, right? Oh, and it actually doesn't. Well, it should. Oh, and of course this doesn't work because this is a server component. So of course we can't see it in the client console, um, but instead we can see it in the server console. So if I do this into a side by side and I click the console log, we can see down here in our console, it's actually being logged. So overall, server components are pretty cool. They save you a lot of time. And one major benefit is that if you wanted to achieve full stack type safety before, if you're working in TypeScript, you would use a library called Zod and then share a validator schema between your front end and back end. If you've never worked with Zod, that might sound a bit abstract, but essentially it means you're sending over the same data that you're expecting on the back end 
and everything just works fine and you get full stack type safety. In the server actions approach, you very tightly couple your front end to your back end code, you write it in the same file, which is pretty crazy. So you don't really need to worry about full stack type safety anymore because you could define a type inside of that file where you have your front end and back end code and you'd be good to go. So that's that's pretty neat, but a negative is also there. Recently I saw a post on Twitter and if I find it, I'm gonna put it on the screen here. I might not find it, I'm not sure. And what it showed is a component that looks pretty similar to what I just showed you, a bit different where you fetch your personal secrets right before you call the server action. And what that post said, the gist of it was that fetching your data right before calling the actual server action was not very secure. Now, to be honest, I didn't fully understand it, but I found it interesting because apparently it's quite straightforward to accidentally leak your credentials because it can get very confusing. Of course, if you have the use server and use client everywhere, what is server, what is client? The line separating client and server code traditionally has been very clear, API server and everything else client side. Now it's not anymore, so it might be very easy to leak your personal credentials if you're not exactly sure what you're doing. Now, of course, these are experimental. The app router is stable, server actions are not. That's a very important distinction to make. So you shouldn't even use this in production in the first place. And even if you do, you're strongly advised against that. But in that case, at least make sure you know what you're doing, you know what is exactly on the server and what's on the client to avoid leaking your personal credentials. I'd be super interested in hearing your thoughts about server actions. Do you think they're good implementation, coupling everything so tightly together? Or do you think the traditional approach of having a very clear distinction between front-end and back-end via API routes makes more sense? I'd be super interested in hearing your thoughts. And then I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye-bye.